Hey guys, my name is Dominic Lerma. I'm a welding instructor here at the Tulsa Welding School at the Houston campus. Today I will be showing you the open route on bevel plates in the 2G position. Now we're going to be using 6010 for the route and the hot pass and 7018 for the fill and cap. Alright, let's get it done. So first things first, right, before we start prepping, before we start grinding and welding, right, we need proper PPE. So that being said, we need gloves, some sleeves, okay, and two forms of eye protection, right, double eye protection. So I have safety glasses and I have a flip front on my welding hood that offers me a secondary form of eye protection, okay. Now talk about the prep. Now, we need to grind these plates off, right? So these plates have rust and mill scale, all right? So, we need to grind the top uh, of our bevel plates. We need to grind the back and the bevel itself, okay? Now, how much do we grind? So, about half inch to three quarters, right? On the top and the back, okay? Now, the bevel plate, the actual bevel itself, we need to clean the whole thing, right? So, as you can see on this bevel plate, there's a little curve to it. I, I like to make it nice and straight and smooth, okay? Now, I do that using a sanding disc, right? Also known as a flapper disc or a tiger paw. I like to secure my, my, my plates down, right, so nice and tight, to where when I'm grinding, my plates don't move, okay? So, um, if it starts to slide around, you're going to be really inconsistent with uh, your prep, okay? So I, so, I like to have a nice, smooth finish, right, straight lines, um, so no gouging of, of uh, the plates with the uh, grinding disc, with the sanding disc, you know, you want to... So make it look not nice and smooth, right? And consistent. Okay, so let's get to it. So, now that we've cleaned up our bevel plates, right? We cleaned up the top, we've cleaned up the bevel itself and the back. Now, when prepping, what I like to do, right, when I grind is forward and backward, one smooth pass, right? Forward and backward in one direction. So you don't want your grind marks going this way, that way, right? Looks nicer, um, it's a, a cleaner finish, right, and more uniform. Okay, so now that we've cleaned up the bevel plates, now we need to put a land on it. Now our land, right, the way we put it on there is we grind the, this knife edge here, we put a nice straight edge, right, so with our grinding disc to make a land, okay? Now, I like to personally use a 3.30 second land because I do a 3.30 second gap, okay? So I like a little tighter gap, so less of a land, um, and I run it about 75 amps so I can control the keyhole a little bit better. Now, when I do this, right, when I put my land on there, I like to clamp it down again, right? Nice, even, flat surface, okay? Now, if I have a fit-up plate like this, I like to angle it, okay, just a little bit. And then now I'm switching over to a 1 8 grinding disc. Now, it's very important when you're putting your land on plate or on pipe, okay, you want to make it consistent and even. So again, ju just like we grinded our, our plates in one direction, we want to do the same with our land. Forward, backwards, okay? Now our disc, right, my angle of my disc, right, is flat. So I do not want a steep angle because I run the chance of it biting and I gouge into it. Okay. 
this is our final product. We've already cleaned the bevel plates right on the top, on the back, and the bevel itself. And now we've put a land on it. Okay, so this is what your final product would look like. My landing is a 332nd, right? So I want to make sure that I know that my landing is a 332nd, okay? So how do we do that? So we're welding with the 7018 rod, right? So the diameter of it is 332, right? Now this bare metal part is 332. So what I like to do as I grind or once I'm done, I like to double check and put that bare metal part right on the land. Right, so that'll tell me if I need to grind a little bit more, if I'm at 332, or I grind it a little too heavy. Okay, so right there you can see I'm right at 332. Now to fit it up, okay. So, right here on this bottom, so I have a flat plate, just a normal flat plate. So, this here, when I put my plates on top, I like to have a nice smooth surface. Um, so no warps in it, right? So my plate stays straight, okay? Now, fit it up. I do a 332 gap, okay? So 332, um, for the spacer, I like to use this little stainless wire, three, 332 stainless wire, okay? Um, and to fit it up, I'm gonna put this right in the center, squeeze the plates together, make sure they're lined up, Make sure my gap is nice and straight, consistent, right? It's holding there, all right? So, now, when I go to tack it, I tack it in the back of the plates, right here on my edges, and I like to put nice, strong tacks. So when I weld, right, my gap is not gonna close on me, okay? So, to help me tack it and keep it consistent, I like to uh, clamp it down right here in the middle. Okay, right here in the middle. All right, cool. So, good. Now, I have my gap set up, right? 332 fits in there. 332 fits in there, okay? Now, I'm gonna tack it here in the back. Now, setting up my machine, okay? We have our, our Miller XMT450, right? Now, before we turn it on, we need to check that our polarities are right, okay? Now, welding stick, SMAW, also known as shielded metal arc welding, right? We run reverse polarity. So once we check that, and we're good, right? We're gonna turn on our, our machine. Make sure that this machine is set on stick. Okay, we're set on stick, and I'm at 75 amps. All right, now that's to tack it, and I also run my route at 75 amps. Okay, now with this fit up, 332 land and 332 gap, you your amperage for it varies from 70 to 80. Okay, so that's your range. All right. Now let's tack it up. Now when tacking it, I use a 60-10, 1 8 60-10. Now the way that I tack it, okay, is I'm gonna go from one side, strike an arc, add some metal, jump to the other plate, add some metal, and bridge it across. I'm gonna bridge across, and I'm gonna do the same for the other side, okay? But before I tack the other side, I need to make sure my gap stays consistent. Okay, now if it opens or closes, I need to fix that accordingly, okay? So now that we have our first tack, right? I'm gonna recheck what my gap, so make sure it's still 332, right? That my gap, it hasn't moved, so once, once it's good, I'm gonna tack it on this side.
another good reason of using this flat plate, right, and tacking it up like this, right, is we have no high-low, okay? So it, it, ha it makes the plates even, all right? So both plates are equal, right? We're flush. Um, so high-low is when our plates go up and down like that. They're offset a little bit, okay? So we don't want that, all righty? So. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tack this plate up to my my welding tree so we can start our root pass. Okay. plate tacked up we're gonna run our root pass our first pass on this open root test okay now these tacks before I start to uh, weld out my root I got to clean these up a little bit okay now the way that I put in my root okay um, so I do a, a whip and pause motion right so I come out of the keyhole and then back in and add metal Okay, so going forward breaks down the walls, creates your keyhole, coming back into it fills it up. Okay, so that's going to look a little something like this with the rod. It's going to be forward, come back, forward, come back, forward, come back. Okay, so I'm going to have the keyhole, right? Little keyhole, and I'm going to come out of it break down my, my my bevel walls and then come back inside the keyhole and add metal, all right? So once I go forward and come back, right, I'm adding the metal, I'm controlling that keyhole. You need to control the keyhole, all right? So with the rod, I'm gonna be inside that bevel. Nice tight arc, right, controlling the uh, keyhole, going forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. Every step needs to be the same. Consistency, all right? Little rhythm. Goes one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now once I'm doing that, I'm favoring my top bevel just a little bit, all right? Just a little bit. I'm favoring the top because that bottom will take care of itself due to gravity, okay? All right, so we got our plate tacked up. We're gonna run our root pass, our first pass on this open root test, okay? Now, these tacks, before I start to uh, weld out my root, I gotta clean these up a little bit, okay? Now, the way that I put in my root, okay? Um, so I do a, a whip and pause motion, right? So I come out of the keyhole and then back in and add metal. Okay, so going forward breaks down the walls, creates your keyhole, coming back into it fills it up. Okay, so that's gonna look a little something like this with the rod. It's gonna be forward, come back, forward, come back, forward, come back. Okay, so I'm gonna have the keyhole, right? Little keyhole, and I'm gonna come out of it break down my, my, my bevel walls and then come back inside the keyhole and add metal, all right? So once I go forward and come back, right, I'm adding the metal, I'm controlling that keyhole. You need to control the keyhole, all right? So with the rod, I'm gonna be inside that bevel. Nice tight arc, right, controlling the uh, keyhole. Going forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. Every step needs to be the same. Consistency, all right? Little rhythm. Goes one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now once I'm doing that, I'm favoring my top bevel just a little bit, all right? Just a little bit. I'm favoring the top because that bottom will take care of itself due to gravity, okay? When welding any weld, no matter the uh, position, 
right? It's very important to be comfortable. Set yourself up for success, right? You need to be comfortable. So remember, the ABCs of welding. Always be comfortable, okay? As best as you can. Now, doesn't mean you're always going to be comfortable, but when you can, do so, okay? Now, when doing this route, okay, I like to start off back here in this angle and move with my plate. I'm gonna move with my plate. Come in, like that, forward. All right, so I'm gonna start him back up here and I can see my keyhole and I have a, uh, a line of sight, all right? So I know where I'm going, okay? So right here, I, I, I can still see my, my keyhole in back of me and I can still see where I'm going. All right, so make sure when you start, you can finish comfortably, okay? Comfortably. All righty. Now remember, we're at 75 amps, doing a whip and pause, and my setup is a 332 land, 332 gap. All right, get it done. So, I've thrown in um, a part of my, my root pass, right? So, now that I've stopped, I have my keyhole here. Now we have to restart, okay? Now I'm gonna feather down my stop here about a good half inch, all right? I'm gonna make the very end of it thin so when I go back and restart, I can blend in properly, okay? I'm gonna show you that right now. Now, for the restart, when throwing your root, you're gonna start in back of where you stopped, all right? So, I'm gonna strike up an arc here, right? I'm gonna warm up the rod and the metal, right? Coming forward, and right before that keyhole, right? I'm gonna push through, break down this, this metal in here, and then continue on, okay? Continue on, so I can properly blend, blend in my uh, root pass, okay? Let's get it done. Alright, so now that the root pass is completed, I'm going to wire wheel it off and then you have to make sure you grind down your root. Take all the slag off right now. Important, do not grind your whole root out. Don't go crazy with the grinder. Don't make that root thin because once you do that hot pass, you're going to blow through it, okay? You're putting that metal in there, right, to reinforce. Don't take it back out, okay? Do not take it back out. Nice, so, so grind it nice and light. Take off all the slag, right? If there's wagon tracks in there, so take them out. Just be very cautious while grinding, okay? So next, we're gonna throw in a hot pass. The hot pass goes directly on top of our root. I'm throwing the hot pass with 6010, okay? So, 
this hot pass is going to reinforce the toes of our root pass, okay? It's gonna tie in our toes to our, our bevels, okay? So, by doing that, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I do my hot pass. So, I'm gonna start here on my top toe, right? I'm gonna come down to my bottom, come down, and then back up. So, I'm gonna start on my top, come down, Back up, hold, pause, 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 pause. So I'm, once I'm coming down and forward, I'm tying in right to my walls here. And coming back up, I hold, I tie in on top. Tying in on bottom, tie in on top. Tying on bottom, tie in on top, okay? I'm gonna do my hot pass at 90 amps, okay? So now that it's been wire wheeled, now you, so you can inspect it. Now, if you have any trash left over, as far as like the little buckshot, if you have uneven surfaces, want, uh, high spots, low spots, right? You want to fix those and make your hot pass even, right? So um, I'm gonna grind down this little buckshot. I got a little high spot right there. I'm gonna grind it down even. So when I throw my fill. That fill follows that little foundation, okay? So, we've thrown in our hot pass, we've thrown in our root, we've grinded down the little high spots, a little trash, a little buckshot and stuff. So now, we're gonna throw in our fills. We throw in our fills with 7018. So I'm using a 332 second 7018. So my fills, right, where we start is at the bottom. We always start from the bottom up, okay? Now, here I'm gonna start from about little way, little past half, halfway. I'm gonna come down right before the bevel edge, right, come back up. So I do little U's, right, and I pause on top so I can keep that, that, that metal up instead of it sagging down, okay? So, a little U's, right? You can call them U's or L's or however you see it, right? I'm gonna come up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, all right? So as I come down, I'm moving across. All right, I'm moving across, coming back up. Moving across, coming back up. Moving across, coming back up. All right, cool. So I'm running this at 90 amps, all right? Now same way, I'm gonna start from my left hand side, go down to my right. All right, so now I'm gonna restart and continue on with this first fill, all right? And then we're gonna go on to our, our second fill, our, our top beat. All right, so now time for our second fill, our top bead, okay? So, I'm gonna do the same manipulation, right? But I'm gonna come up here on top. 
And at, so as I said, for the bottom bead, same thing applies. Take care of your bevel edge, okay? Do not go over, okay? So I'm gonna come down again, come back up and hold, 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 and making sure that I overlay this bottom bead, okay? That's all it is. It's doing another first bead, but on top. All right, so up, down, up, 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 okay? All right. Now I've done uh, our fill, now we're flush, right? We're perfectly flush. Now for a three bead cap, all right? So this is where you go outside your bevels. Now you're only allowed to go 1 16th outside of your bevel edge, all right? On the bottom and your top, all right? So my first one will go directly on top of here, overlaying our, our bottom uh, fill, and then coming down that 1 16th straight across. All right, so now we've thrown our first cap, our bottom cap. All right, now our second one is gonna go directly in the middle, all right? Directly right there. I'm still going to overlay on, on, on my bottom bead, all right? And I'm doing the same manipulation as I did for the fill. I do the same one for the bottom cap, that middle, and then I do something a little different on that top one, all right? Simple, keep it the same, all right? Consistency. Alrighty, let's get it. So I've thrown the second cap, that middle cap of my um, 3B cap. Now for my third, I'm not going to put any special razzle dazzle on it, right? I'm just going to drag it across, all right? Still making sure that I'm overlaying, right? Correctly, I'm just going to drag across, right? Keeping an eye on my puddle. Now if I do manipulate, right? I'm going to spread my uh, metal out and I'm going to be outside of that tolerance, all right? So you're only allowed 1 16th outside of your bevels.
All right, guys, we went ahead and completed our bevel plate. We did a three bead cap. Um, so we, so this is the open root bevel plate in the 2G position. We did the 6010 root, 6010 hot pass, and 7018 filling cap. All right. Well, guys, thank you for watching. If you could, please like, subscribe, and share our YouTube channel. And let us know down below in the comment box so what you would like to see next. All right. And uh, also, whenever you go to make a weld in any position, any process, do not have any fear in your heart. Appreciate it. Thank you.